All right, I'm going to take you into the world of, uh, of strategy today. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I want to start you off with probably one of the best uh, thinkers in the business, um, a gentleman named Peter Drucker, who is truly, the, the, I would say, the father of business consulting. And uh, a lot of people have read his stuff, but a lot of people have missed probably some of the most important things that he said. And this advice, I think, is very, very important. He said, purpose of a business is to create a customer. So the business enterprise has two and only these two basic functions, marketing and innovation. Marketing and innovation produce results. <clears throat> All the rest are costs. Marketing is the distinguishing unique function of the business. Distinguishing unique function. In other words, that's really what your brand should be all about. What makes it different? What makes it unique? Why should I buy you instead of your competitors? And, and that, is a, that is terrific advice which very few people remember. Um, but let's start with what I call a fact of business. Global economy is really a driving force into the world today. Very difficult. Companies and countries succeed or fail depends really on how well they sell whatever they have to sell. Uh, this is really the world out there, and, and believe me, this is the game. And in a tough world, using strategy is really how you survive. And, and that is sort of the message of today strategy. And essentially, I would say a book for the times. In other words, if, if you're going to read one book, um, I think some of you have this. Trout on Strategy is a pretty good starting point because it's a, it's a composite of a lot of what I've written over the years. It, uh, and, and so if you read this book, you're going to have a pretty good sense of what strategy is about. Now, I'm not going to cover all seven abouts today, but first and foremost, perceptions. It's about being different, two most important pieces, which I'll, I will talk about. Competition, which we'll get into with marketing warfare. Specialization, being good at one thing, very helpful. Simplicity. Leadership, in other words, you know, being, being the leader, knowing where you want to go. And it's about reality. It's not wishful thinking. You can't sort of, it's not what you want. It's what your competition will let you do. That's, that is the game out there. Another fact of business, the world continues to be more competitive. What we used to see as competition, you know, now looks like a tea party. We are in a world <clears throat> of killer competition. And, and that, that's what's happening out there. Another fact, strategy and marketing have to be combined if you're to succeed. Marketing is what drives business strategy. Strategy is what makes you unique and, it, and, and is the best way to put that difference into the minds of your customers and your prospects. Now, the U.S. is really a marketing laboratory. And my message to when I come out to this part of the world, it's, it's a competitive laboratory from which you can learn. And that way you don't have to make the same mistakes that we have made over the years. And my 15 books pretty much describe what's been happening in this laboratory. As Rajiv mentioned, Big Brands, Big Trouble is a, is a pretty good analysis of some of the mistakes that companies have made uh, over the years. And as I said a few minutes ago, it's all about survival out there. If you're going to get out there and, and compete you, you, and survive, you better have the right strategy. Because here's the, here's the downside. You make a mistake. Your competitors quickly get your business, and what's worse, you rarely get it back. That's the problem. When that business goes, there's so much competition out there, it is gone forever. And that's why mistakes are so painful today. And the way you get good at this stuff is to learn from the past. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. A very famous quote from Mr. Santiana, and that's exactly right. You have to learn from the best and not repeat your mistakes or, or other people's mistakes. So it's kill or be killed. That's what we're out there. 
Now, what's, what, what you're facing out there is what we call the tyranny of choice. Uh, and this is a relatively new thing that it didn't exist years ago. In the United States, there are now 180 brands of dog food. 180 brands. That's what I mean by the tyranny of choice. I showed this slide in China, and they got, I got a big laugh, and they said, what's so, I said, what's so funny? They said, well, in China, we eat the dogs. <laughs> Bottled water's got 2,000 brands. Uh, it's, uh, it is, uh, and this is just water. If you have a cough or a cold, you have 134 brands to choose from. So you can see why, why people, if you make a mistake, they move to another brand very quickly, because there are so many choices out there. That's why mistakes are so costly. Now, you might say, how come? Why, why does, why is, what's behind choice? Well, marketing has some basic laws. I wrote a book called The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. All right? One of the laws explains choice. It's called the law of division. The 10th immutable law says, over time, a category will divide and become two or more categories. And that's what happens. Categories constantly divide. Uh, and, and that's why you suddenly see uh, many, many brands in a category. This division will just not stop. Now, the first principle, and probably the, one of the most important principles, is it's, it's all about perceptions. It's not about a better product. It's about a better perception. And positioning is really the tool that's the essence of the strategy you have to employ to deal with competition. It's the starting point for your planning and your marketing. And this is the first book to read. This is the first book I wrote, 1980, Positioning the Battle for Your Mind. And basically, it began to lay out the, 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 the parameters of getting into the mind or not getting into the mind. And repositioning is the... Um, is the end of the, my, of the, it started with positioning, and this is the last book I wrote, repositioning, and you know, uh, marketing in an area of competition, change, and crisis. And, and this, is, this is a book about how you make adjustments in an ever-changing world. Now here's my basic problem. It's, I call it positioning myopia. Many use the word, few see it clearly. I see this all around the globe, I see it everywhere, uh, that essentially everybody likes to throw the world around, but not a lot of folks truly have a deep understanding of it. Uh, they don't see it, it clearly. So let's get to the definition so you begin to understand. Number one, it's how you differentiate your product, your service, in the mind of your prospect. That is what it, it is all about. And repositioning, the other end of the spectrum is how do you adjust perceptions in the mind of a prospect? If you have to, how do you make adjustments? So, but again, what are we dealing with? Perceptions. Now, how does the mind work? First and foremost, minds are limited. People can't take in all the information that's out there. So you, you have to be careful with the fact that, that there's a only a limited number of space in people's minds. Minds hate confusion. If your concept is somewhat confusing, uh, forget it. You're doomed. Minds are insecure. They don't know for sure what to buy uh, and because there's a certain insecurity. Minds don't change. Uh, a lot of money is lost on trying to change people's minds in the marketplace, and it just doesn't work. Minds can lose focus. In other words, you can, you can, you can cloud up things. You can, you can create a certain amount of, uh, of problems so that people can't see you. So let's start with those basic mind principles, limited. There's a product ladder in people's minds. In other words, you and I store brands in what I call a ladder in the mind. This, this could be a rent-a-car ladder in America, Hertz, Avis, National. Now, there's a rule of seven. Uh, a Harvard psychologist figured out that nobody can remember more than seven brand names in any category. And the only reason you might remember seven is if it's a high usage category. You know, you use the product every day, like toothpaste. Some, pro some categories have very few rungs on the ladder. 
because there's not much interest in what you're saying. So that's, that's the difference. 